This is gonna be a good one, guys. I'm so happy you're here. Hi, everybody. Yo, what's up? Where are you calling from, Alex? Uh, from New York. Right on, Priscilla. I'm back in Los Angeles now. Oh, lovely, lovely. This side of town. Where are you calling from, Taylor? I'm from Missouri. Yes, sir. Oh, St. Lou. Yep. Um, did I tell you I'm shooting a film um, at the end of this month there? Oh, that's awesome. We've got we've got a couple of local people in the mentorship and the our members um, who we may just like give an extra gig or, or whatever if you're down, if you're available. Yeah. Cool. All right. Shoot me a message in the next couple of days and I'll, you know, figure it out. I'm sure they'll need people. It's a good one too. It's a great script, great film. Okay, everybody, enough dilly-dallying. Our special guest today is a native of Iowa. Uh, he has appeared in The Walking Dead, Law and Order. Most likely though, you probably recognize him playing Oswald the Penguin Cobblepot in 100 episodes of the hit show Gotham. A lot of his films have gone to Cannes and Sundance Awards and all sorts of stuff. Everyone, please welcome, without further ado, Robin Lord Taylor. Hey, everyone. Hi, Robin. Hey, how's it going? Welcome, welcome. Thanks for coming. Thanks. Hey, thanks. Uh, thanks for being here, Robin. Um, all the students and members and everybody, uh, if you're joining us on on uh, our Zoom or Working Actor Pro from the platform. Welcome, welcome. We have a very special guest, Robin Lord Taylor. Thanks for being here all the way from New York, right? Yes, Lovely. yes, New York City. And, and you were just, um, you've been working in New York for quite a little bit this month. You've been active, right? Can we talk about that or not? Yeah, of course. Yeah, I just, um, I just got uh, jumped on for uh, five episodes on uh, Law and Order uh, Organized Crime. Oh, the uh, OC. The, the the OC, yeah, totally. <laughs> lovely, lovely. And our, our friend Adam, who you know from the podcast, was, I believe, standing in for you, right? Yeah, he, oh, he, he was in town. It's fantastic. He's like, there's a couple of crew members that I worked together with on Gotham. And then, yeah, and Adam was free. And so we've been working together again. It's been amazing. Well, let me segue right into this, Robin. You know, now that we're on the subject of you know, people from your past coming back to cross it and, and people coming back onto cast and crew that, you, you know, you just see every, you know, so often through your tenure as you add on the years. Um, is it really something that you see a lot where, where you work with people and even if you're in a city like New York, you, you will work with the same people every now and then peppered, peppered through your, your tenure. Is that right? Oh, for sure. I mean, there, this, the law and order is a, is a perfect example in a couple ways. Like uh, one of the executive producers of the show now, well, I'll talk about two of the executive producers, one of which is Jonathan Strauss. And he was uh, a casting director on, I believe it was, it wasn't SVU. It was criminal intent yeah. and like years, years and years ago. And so I continually like went in for him. I never got it onto that show. Well, we, you know, we always had a rapport and um, the auditions always, you know, he was just a really great guy to read for. And then all these years later, he's now an executive producer on organized crime. And he texted me when I got the job and he was like, we're finally working together. And now I'm talking about 15, 17, 18 years of knowing Jonathan. And then, you know, finally here we are. So it's, it's, that's one example. Another example is another executive producer directed me on, uh, on, I was on the flagship Law and & Order, and when this role came along, he thought of me, and then just, it was just an offer. So, you know, it's amazing, and that, and I did that in 2011. So, it's, it's just, it, yeah. It, and, and if you went back. on, if you went on set 2011, and you were hung over, and you would, you know, you were just kind of in and out, and did your thing, you know, this stuff does come back around for a very specific reason. And, and this, this job I feel is just like any other job out there where, you know, a, a salesman hooking up with another salesman to get a sales deal. And like people, people come, it's, 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 it feels like it's very neighborly and connected and people know everybody. And, and it, it really kind of, 
holds true the importance of being a good person and and being a hard worker and kind and respectful and all these qualities that shows want in you because they're going to spend like 15 or 16 hours with you right that's exactly what it is yeah. i mean it is it's so much of it especially if you're you know if you're not a child star or you know this the the child of a famous person already like like if you're really coming just from like right out, like I come right out of school, you know, just right into the fire auditioning in New York City, you know, it's like, like the best thing you can do for yourself is when you get those opportunities to be on set or on stage or in the rehearsal room or wherever, if you come with that joy and that, you know, just real appreciation for being there and just for that, that, that extra time to like be kind to everyone and like keep the energy light and inviting and like you know all the good stuff like bring the good energy that's what they remember because again like yeah like you said these are 12 14 16 hour days on shows that are very dramatic and like you know the subject matter is very intense and the, you know not to mention their stunts there are you know very you know lots yeah. of things happening that are, right. that are taxing and like you know it's and again, the long days and the cold and the heat, you know, all that stuff. They're going to remember the person who was, who was, you know, joyful on set and thankful and, and, and kind and real, you know, I'm right. not saying you got to go in and be fucking Shirley Temple or something like, you know, it should come from a real place, but just, you know, embrace just, just, you know, that joy of being creative with people, you know, yeah. even though it's TV, even though it's whatever it is, but like, it, it's that joy of creating something with everybody and being part of a team yeah let's jump let's jump on on, on your way from iowa into new york you started booking kind of quick but let's go through what you're thinking i mean a lot of a lot of us are maybe we're just starting out and we have those well our heart is saying this is what i want to do and our head is saying yeah but what the hell do you think that you can do there do you really think that you deserve to eat at this table you think that you could achieve your dreams what makes you different from anyone else? As you're driving cross country, what were you thinking? I was thinking I have the best friends in the world and we're all moving to New York to make shit together and we're all going to do the thing. And we're, I was just, I was lucky because I had, like you're saying, like you have all of those thoughts being like, Am I going to make it? Am I good enough? Am I whatever enough? You know. Correct me if I'm uh, wrong, Robin. You had you had speaking of friends, you were connected with someone that was eventually going to be a creative partner in your professional life. Can you talk about that? The importance of yeah, planting the I, seed I, before everything starts? Yeah, well, I was uh, I my best friend in college, uh one of my best friends uh was Billy Eichner and we were roommates in uh in college. And uh, we moved to New York together and lived together in New York for, you know, the next five years, uh, five, six years. And you made your own uh, content together too, which started out. Yeah, Billy and I, we were, we were in New York. We were like, you know, I had booked like a, I was doing commercials like here and there, but you know, it's just, it's the auditioning life. You know, it's like filling your days, like trying to stay productive, stay positive. And thankfully I just happened to live with, one of the funniest people in the world like and who is also my best friend i mean i you know again like i was fortunate in that way we were both like there was a time where like it was about uh yeah where we were like we were both in between things and and billy was just like let's let's make something together and so yeah we just decided to do a, a fake comedy talk show that out of that billy came up with the idea of the man on the street video that we introduced into the thing and I was running around with him doing the camera work and uh and then and you know and this is before we had releases or anything it wasn't it was just on you YouTube which was right. like nothing then it was like so MySpace anyway, <laughs> exactly same yeah. exact time yeah so um so anyway we and then that became Billy on the street you know it's and then it all sort of came together Point is, is foster those relationships, foster those relationships where you can, if you, if you're so fortunate to connect with fellow artist, a fellow actor, director, writer, yeah, like just, you know, stick, st hold on to them, like hold on to them because they will carry you through the times when you don't feel like you're going to be able to do it. Like when you don't, when you want to quit, when you want to give up and then vice versa, and then you're there to elevate everybody else. I mean, without my friends, I would never be here. 
I never would have had the courage to move to New York City. You know, I yeah. So I you know I you're that, right. It, there right. is so much of importance about the outside um, people in our lives looking at us and either supporting us, uh, inspiring us, or telling us, hey, you know, you should think about this, or you know what you do really well. As a human being, our tendency is to just kind of dumb ourselves down, not give us the benefit of the doubt. And it's those wonderful people across the table who say, here are your strengths and this is what you can do. And I believe in you. And that's the thing that sparks. Think about, my God, if the musicians and actors and all sorts of people who didn't have anybody to say, she's got something or he has something there, you know? Um, and are you, are you, do you see all of your colleagues being in the business for so so long here, as they start to live their path of acting, that the Billy Eichners and the Law and Orders and the all these little things pepper in through their path. And it's all different. Everybody has a different path, but everybody has their Billy Eichner, their Law and Order, their Jonathan Strauss, because of just existing in this space and working so hard over so many years, the importance of fostering all those relationships and observing the idea, all this stuff, anything that's happening ha happening to me is happening for a very specific reason. And this is my path. This is my Billy. This is my SVU. Um, yeah, and everybody again, has a path, right? Right. Everyone has a path and everyone is talented, but not everyone is a nice, good person who's fun to work with. Not, not everyone is someone who takes the time to connect with their fellow actor, with their fellow crew member, with their, you know what I mean? Like, again, it's like, you know, you could be the most talented person in the world, but you know, if, if, if you don't take that time to be a good person and to like really connect and just, and really like focus on doing that, listening to, to people, listening, being present, yes, you know, like that's, I don't know. I, like, I think people are successful because they're lovely, wonderful people, you know, that like people are excited to be in the room with, you know, like, I, I think that's what leads to great success. Uh, yeah. At least it did me, you know, like, not that I'm saying I'm a wonderful person to be in the room with. I'm just saying like, you know, like, I, 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 I really make an effort on set to, to create a, 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 a positive, you know, you know, creative yes. working environment for everybody. I, even if I'm like, even if the scene is like me, like, you know, like, I don't know, like orchestrating someone's horrific murder or something like something crazy like Gotham freaking thing um but yeah yeah, yeah I don't know anyway just like keeping it like keeping it fun keeping it loving the work loving the art feeling so great when you're there yeah and it, and it's it's not just for friends being on set you know I've, I've watched you on set uh Robert and I got to um shoot a nice small uh short during the high points of COVID, a, a short called Skeletons, and it's on the festival circuit now. And watching you, um, it's interesting to see the actors that really, really do well are not only just like nice of, to their friends and the actors, but I try to, the DP, the, the PA, the, the boom guy, you know, I'll pop a mint or I'll be in the makeup chair and talk to the makeup person because you know what? Some actors just don't. And, and if there's a one shot and a DP's you know, coming in and I screw up, I make sure I say, hey, sorry, I know this is a long shot. I'm going to get this. I'm sorry. To, to, just, to just at least relay the idea that it, I'm not just me. I'm not just an actor here. I'm just a small little mechanical part in this huge machine. And when actors do that, they abandon themselves and they start to kind of reach out to other people and, and are aware about other people in, in, the, in the scene. I guess it's a pretty favorable thing for actors, you know, because you're you're not just an actor; you're part of this whole production. Of course, and and the thing is too is like especially on on a film set or a TV set when you're dealing when you're acting on camera, you as an actor you only have so much control over the performance. Ultimately, it's going to be passed off. I mean, first of all, there's the camera operator who's holding a camera in your face. You know what I mean, like like the, like you're working together with them, and then you're going to be, and then and also at this. And then it goes to the editors and it goes to the director, you know, then it carries on and it's out of your hands. But, you know, like, I think the, <laughs> like the verb, I like to use this example is that like, so like I was working on Gotham and I was like slumped over in a, on a couch and, you know, and I like, and I was fully like had my neck all tucked in. So we had like multiple chin action going and right before they called action, 
the lovely Gerard Sava, who was the A camera operator on Gotham, he just goes, Rob. and I was like, oh, and then I just like raised my neck. And you know what I mean? That's just like a perfect example of like, because we had that connection and that rapport and that we like work together, like he's got eyes on me and I have to trust him. Like you have to like, as an actor on a film set, on a TV set, you have to like relinquish that control because ultimately you have very, you have, no, you have all you have is the words that you're saying, you know what I mean? And you have to rely on them to, to see you and, and to show the best side of you, show the best take, the, the thing that works the best in that show or in that moment, you know? So yeah, it's all, it's it. camaraderie, it's connection. It's like, it's, it's a, it's a, it's like a moving machine, you know? And when you're, when you're, connected. when you're more familiar with everybody, you're familiar on set, you feel good. You know, some of those, the worst jobs I've had were when I just came in for a quick thing and I didn't know anybody. And, you know, when you know people ask names, say, thanks. I always like shake hands, just say, thanks for being here. If I, if I'm like heavily in the mo in the project. Now, um, we're, we're going to open it up, if that's cool. Some questions from, from our actors. Um, go ahead and raise the old hand. I'm going to do my best to, to hit as many people as possible. Um, so let's talk. Let's talk process. Let's talk struggle. Let's talk anxiety and, and lines and pressures and markets and all that good stuff. Anybody have a burning question right now for Robin? I see Ava. Hey, Robin. Nice to meet you. Um, my question... I have so many, and as Tommy was bringing up all the categories, I wish I could talk to you forever. But when it came to um, uh, nailing an agent, like what were some of the struggles and um, challenges that you faced while getting to that point of, you know what, this is an agent I want to work with? Like, how did the auditioning process go and, and all of that? I, you know, I, I, I went to, I was part of a showcase when I graduated from school. And then, so I had that going for me in that in that regard so that was you know very helpful but uh in terms of like my legit representation I sort of landed at this very small like you know agency that was older then through them like I did like a reading here which led to a play which then led to another reading because there was a producer on the play that then was producing another reading that at that time they managed to, someone knew someone and they got Jesse Eisenberg to play the lead. And this is before, this is like right. maybe like 18 years old. And then those agents who were there saw me and they were originally, it was Abrams and now it's A3 and I've been with them for, you know, 18 years. Mm -hmm. um, so all this to say, which is, again, it's kind of like what we were talking before. It, it's a roundabout process and it's so disheartening and it's so discouraging, but the thing that connects all of it is saying yes to that reading, saying yes to that play as much as you can, like, you know, like opening yourself to all possibilities because it's like, it, it, again, like you never know where circuitously that will lead. Right. You know, again, like that was just a complete fluke. And it was because like, you know, I was like, yes, of course I'll do this reading. I didn't even know who was in it. But, um, you know, and it was because it was a producer on this play that I did, and she and I got along really well. All the actors that we interview on the podcast, I feel, before the break, every story seems to me to be this, I was here at this time in this place, and it just so happened that dot, dot, dot. And it's just very interesting. So think about where you are and what you're doing and stay active and go out there and they're going to find you. If you're supposed to be found, they will find you. People remember you and producers, casting directors, all of those people, they remember you because they remember your wonderful, beautiful personality when you walk into the room. You know what I mean? Like they, 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 they just, it, that energy, it, again, it's about energy and they feel it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah 100%. They yeah. remember it like a visceral way, like a, like a, yeah. like a, like a physical memory, you know? Right. So yeah, it's hard because there's no like distinct answer, but again- right. We do kind of have an answer for anyone who is interested. Really, really great thing called Agent Genie. And what you'll get is when you grab it, it'll take you right to this PDF. 
you will grab this Excel file right now in LA. It's like 475. We're in six cities, by the way. Uh, what happens is you shoot it out all in one go, one click, and there's a merge status. There's a tracking report. It'll tell you who's looking at you. They clicked, they responded, but didn't send a thing. So you can follow them up and you can use it unlimited. So anytime you need to get signed, anytime maybe you have an agent that you're not really digging, you can go ahead and, and use that again. So uh, if you have questions about that, let's talk about it after. Um, let's wow, see. Wow, can I just say that that makes me feel so fucking old? Like, that's <laughs> the I know. Movie, back in the day. Right. I don't know if you know about the drama bookshop. The only place where you would go as an out-of-work actor, there were actual printed books with lists of agents and phone numbers in them that you would go through. But that's amazing. Love that tool. That's, that's it's so cool. Exciting. Yeah, we, we, we just signed like three people this week. So uh, Danielle. You know, I have an agent. Um, but how do you kind of tell that you have like a, a bad agent or one that's not really um, working for me in the best way? I, I would say that the the first red flag is if you feel any trepidation about calling them or any sort of weirdness, or if you ever feel like you're contacting them too much, or if they are giving you the vibe that you're bothering them, they're you're working together. Like like this is a part. This is a you know a partnership where they are representing you. They are sending in, sending you out. Like put you know they. So like if 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 you can't call them or talk to them or connect with them or ask them questions and if they can't give you, you know, like just kind, gracious information that like, even if the information is like, yeah, it's really, it's really quiet right now, but don't worry. We're thinking of you. We remember you. Right. You know what I mean? Like that, that like, cause again, like I went through, I went through like months of nothing you know what i mean like this like i've been through like the longest stretches of not even a phone call and then you're starting to think of like reasons to sh pop by the office you know like like reasons to call them like just being like oh i saw this article something hey anything out there for me you know what i mean i've been there if you're ever getting the vibe that it they're not listening to you or or they're they don't want to talk to you or engage with you i don't know that's that's a red flag number one for me yeah um because again yeah you, you have to be able to call them and also like look if you're going like really long stretches with no communication i feel like they even if there's no auditions or anything happening you should be able to call your agent once a month at the very least just to like shoot the shit and be like how's it going like you know like oh my god i i had a a great class the other day and we did this amazing scene or what you know what i mean like just to be able to like talk once a month, you know, like touch base. Like, I think that's super important. Yeah, to be on their radar too. I mean, sometimes they get a casting call and they'll think of the last three people that fall in line with that. Well, they were, they just came by to drop off some flowers and a thing and a this or whatever, or they called us, you know, they're on their radar. And so to be on their radar, just like a boss, squeaky wheel gets the, uh, gets the oil, you know, if you're kind of around and not just like knocking on their door all the time. Um, but yeah, the heavily involved, you want them heavily kind of involved and to see you and to see what you want and to believe in you. If they're active in that, you'll know, you know, um, be okay. cool, like be a cool, kind person, be someone that they want to talk to. Right. Be, you know, be like, Hey, what's up? How's it going? Like, just be not be, you know what I mean? Again, like that's, that's attractive. Like, yeah. Really yeah. And, and we're on the subject now of how do you how do you get in good with your agent, who is great maybe, and that is you're not desperate, you're not making excuses, you don't book out all the time, or if you do, you actually do book out and you do that by the book. Uh, you know, you're, you're respectful, you are, you know, you have a good reputation, you walk into a room and you do all the things that you should do, you leave gracefully, you know, all that stuff goes right back to them. And the reason why I've had the same agents for so many years is because you, you kind of come to bat and they know I'm going to call Tommy, I'm going to call Robin, and I know he's going to send a good tape or he's going to go in and kill it or he's going to go on set and do a great job. It's just you really have to um, get their trust. And it's only in a little experience that you give that. So, um, John, let's hear from you. I've got a I've got a huge issue with auditioning. I've always I always have my auditions generally are crap when it, you're going into an audition and you're in, you're psyching yourself up or you're in a, a mindset ahead of time uh reading for a role 
um, what is your method uh, or a method that you think would be the best for auditioning for a role? Robin hey, loves you're... auditioning, by the way, if you listen to the podcast, <laughs> so you asked the right question to the right man, go ahead. <laughs> I, I, yes, I will. I, I have come around once I, once my career sort of went to the next level, it was when I started to really enjoy teaching myself to enjoy auditioning. And the key to that was, you know, I'm out of work. I'm not working on anything, but holy crap, I get five minutes to play this whacked out, you know, character who's, you know, whatever, like, you know, a criminal or something, you know what I mean? I, I get five minutes to play this part. And it is as important to me in that moment as it would be if I were on, you know, the, the stage of the Winter Garden Theater, you know, on Broadway, you know what I mean? Like treat those moments, like that's your time to perform. That's your time to turn it on. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. like just really, and, and, and so like my process is I, you know, I, I memorize completely. I, I know the material inside and out so that I don't have to worry about that. That's, that's the first thing. And that's, I know that's easier said than done, but I really, <laughs> for me, it's, that's very key is just to have the material down in your brain, your choices nailed down, all of that. And then so that when you walk in that room, you know, it's like, I, I'm sure you've been, you're a performer. I'm sure you've been on stage at, you know, throughout your career, you know, that quiet peace. I, I always have this moment where I have like this, like moment where it, maybe not peace is the right word, but it's like this, like, here we go, you know, here, here it is. And it's like, sort of like this quiet moment where then you have like this, you just rely on the material to carry you through. And you know what I mean? It, I, again, treating it like it's, it's the like it's the performance treating it like it is the one and enjoying it like you do enjoy your time when you're on and when you're on stage it's like that that's key to me one of the problems that i had was i i had i had the lines down i had my choices made i had my beats i had my my subtext etc it was all going and then as soon as i crossed that threshold it went poof and then I would panic, I would tighten up, and everything would go all the, all the crap, all the shit. You know, wait, 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 do you know why? It's because no, you cared so problem. much. You cared so much oh. about that thing that meant everything to you. And for me, too many tears I left that Claire Simon in Chicago, too many terrible sub ride, subway rides in New York, too many awful, awful circling the block about why couldn't I just do it? And I had to come to a place where my happiness was determined not by something so unreliable as an acting job, but something real and true. And, and the problem yeah. with actors, all of us, is that we think that this thing is going to make us happy. But you, you roll around this business for a little bit, you know it is not. It will never be happy. And Robin, I'm sure you know a lot of very successful and very wealthy people from their pursuits. And I don't know about you, but for me, a lot of people, the most unhappy of people are those who have too much money to spend and and too much um too many pedestals to stand on you know we have to come to the belief that this thing is not going to make me happy and once you experience have a little bit of experience in bookings now a co-star is nothing because what well i did them like i did four or five it doesn't matter anymore a guest star yeah i guess but i know i'm not going to be happy afterwards when i was on marvelous mrs Maisel, i looked at the dime bank and i looked around and i thought i am on the biggest show in the world right now but i am not happy why am I not happy? Right. Because I put all my, you know, my coins in this little satchel and this was everything to me, but it, it can't be. And so, so I have to, after an audition, be more excited about coffee afterwards with my friends than the audition. And I know Robin, it's like, you absolutely go balls to the wall and make it a thing, this performance, this thing, but at the same time, zzz, right after zzz, that's it goodbye i don't even remember doing it a week later when they say you got a call back or whatever i have to be reminded because i don't give a shit anymore and i know that sounds weird yeah. but once you get to that place yeah i mean it's so easy look we've all like gone in a room and taken a big shit on our bit. like it's all <laughs> it's happened to everybody you forget your lines you drop your lines you it happens to me too this well i mean since COVID, it's all self tapes. So, but, but like right before COVID, when I was still going in the room, it definitely happened to me. And like, you know, but the thing is, you learn from it. You go, 
you gotta you gotta roll with it you gotta have a sense of humor about it dust yourself off be like okay we're gonna do that differently the next time but you know what i mean like you just you gotta pick yourself up yeah and it's interesting yeah, if you, if you audition for a, st a student short film is a lot different than your nerves at a, on a on a network guest star that's because you have more freedom in the student film and you feel more comfortable. Well, why don't I just apply? I treat everything now as just an indie and it's so much easier. Uh, we only have a couple more minutes. Priscilla, I wanna hear from you. Priscilla was especially excited to come on today. Go ahead. I was very excited. <laughs> Hi, Robin, it's so nice to meet you. Hi. <laughs> I, the question I was wondering was, when you were just starting out, what was the toughest thing to manage just when you were starting out on, on bigger sets and then having to deal with maybe side jobs in the beginning? How did you deal with that? I mean, it, it I, I guess the hardest thing is, um, you know, especially when you're starting out, it's like, it's imposter syndrome. It's like, do I deserve to be here? Like, I, you know, and then the tendency for me is to like, just, you know, shut down, you know what I mean? Because there's a million people running everywhere. And you know what I mean? Like a very intimidating environment, especially when you're first starting out. Um, but you know, like that, yeah, that, that was the hardest thing for me. Um, just like, but, but you know, again, like it's, it's experience. It's, you know, it's like putting yourself out there as much as possible, take saying yes to as many things as possible. All of that builds on itself. You create like, uh, you know, like, you create armor, you know what I mean? So like, like you're, you're, you're more prepared, you're more prepared, you're more prepared. Every experience, you know, leads to confidence on set. And, um, and if you don't have confidence, then fucking fake it. You be confident, like you earn your spot there. Tell yourself that, like, you know, that is a choice that you can make. You can be like, all right, I understand that I'm freaking the freak out, but you know, but again, like I got this job because they wanted me. So I'm going to own that and I'm going to come in and be confident and happy to be there. And I'll tell you that again, is that people see that and people, it's attractive and it's like nice on set to have someone there who's just like owning it, you know? And, and, and again, not being a diva, fuck that, not being a, you know, like, like being down to earth, but just owning your strength and your confidence. That's, that's, I mean, that's key. Yeah. I love that. And, um, you know, you. by the way, yeah. impost imposter syndrome, if, if we have a, a, a link to a, an online article and it, it interviews Meryl Streep, Tom Hanks, Viola Davis, Kate Winslet, the list goes on. And this is recent. And they say, oh, yeah, I feel like I'm a fraud. Tom Hanks is saying, yeah, they're going to they're going to find me out. Meryl's like, when are they going to realize that I'm not good? Now, if those people, if those people can think that and they are where they are, then why don't I just fake this? And consider it a, a, your first characters when you walk in, calm, cool, collected, and at peace. And then yep. you jump in, right? And then you leave calm, cool, collected, and at peace. And it's attractive. It's very attractive. Jamila, I know that your hand has been up. Go ahead. Sorry, I'm trying to, I'm running around trying to cook and get everything together. <laughs> My name is Jamila. Nice to meet everyone. I recently, well, recently, I graduated from school two years ago. I studied theater. And um, I kind of got into film and TV acting back in 2019. And so um, I guess my question would be, uh, how do you as an actor, um, being surrounded by like your peers, you know, people who you can create with and then also go with for advice or, you know, if you aren't feeling as motivated, how do you, um, I guess, kind of fill that void and gap after you graduate? Um, I'm constantly trying to create. I just finished a short film and I constantly have ideas that I want to push and create. So how do you stay encouraged when you feel like doubtful? Those are the people who are going to show, show you sides of yourself that you didn't even know. So like when you're feeling like you're giving up when it's not worth it and all of that, they're going to be like, no, Jamila, remember, you're, you know, incredibly strong and confident person who just made a short film who is making creating content you know like 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 it's it's the community it's it's the friends you know and and, and the co-workers and just those relationships like, and don't you and, think don't you think know. robin that it's also creating creating things i mean when i did my first student film at, at back in college and we screened it for like a few friends in a tiny little like lecture hall thing 
there, there was a friend of mine was like, you know, in tears after, and she looked at me and she was like, wow. And from then on, I said, oh, I can move people. I can affect people. What if I didn't have that friend come up to me and tell me that? I, it wouldn't, I wouldn't have been that confident the next time. I wouldn't have been that confident the, the following time. You know, we, you need to throw stuff out there so that people can validate you and you can, there's only one way to be validated. And that's if you throw something up and it sticks. And the more you do that, the more you're going to believe that for yourself. And the, the reason why you, you maybe have doubt is because you don't believe it yourself. Other people will see you walk into a room and give you the benefit of the doubt, but why don't you? You know, so, you know, you have the power, you have the power to put power inside of you. And, and I think that's what we can take from Robin is it's all about your perspective. You have the power to make your own success and to, to foster your relationships and to build your career. So with that, Robin, uh, we're going to stick around for a, a till the end of the hour and answer some questions still, but, but Robin's busy. He's got a jet. Thank you so much, Robin. Everybody give <laughs> Robin a so round of applause. Thank you, Robin. Thanks, guys. Again, thank you, Rob, I just Robin. Want to say, thank you for being here. Thank you. Robin. Say, good luck to all of you. And again, just be good, kind people. Let your true light shine, and people will just they'll want more of that. So yeah, just lean into that. Anyway, thank you, thanks, Robin. Guys. Thanks. Have thank a good you. night. Thank you. Bye. What a dream. Oh my God, he's the best. Okay, everyone, before I chat about breaking into the business, standing out in the audition room, and what to do in an agent meeting, if you are new or struggling, you're probably feeling a little in the dark, thinking, you know, where do I start? There's so much info that feels like there's no structure to learn it all. Well, good news, we have a full crash course where you'll soak up all the info that you'd find through falling and failing in your first 10 years. When I first started, I had no connections, I had no credits, no money, I had no idea how to really do this thing. But over the years, I heard the right things from the right people and everything clicked. So if you really want this thing, make the investment. Save yourself a decade of struggling and skip the line. For the price of a weekend workshop, you get a working actor's take on how exactly we found a way in, something that I promise you, you will not find in any acting school. Your membership comes with tons of perks like private coaching, discounts, downloads, and access to members-only services like Feedback Fridays. So as promised, here's a $100 off voucher for the course, and you'll have expert mentorship for as long as you want it. How, how do we book how do we book a session with you oh you can just go to book it yeah www.workingactorpro.com slash book it you know i was tired of paying 150 bucks for a coach who usually wasn't available at a moment's notice anyway with book it i cut the price in half and there are no crowded workshops here guys everything is one-on-one -on -one. i always hated getting a coach but after my auditions were always better always 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 so you know it's worth it it's always worth it to have other eyes. There's all sorts of stuff that I don't see as an actor because I'm thinking about my side job and I'm thinking about the lines and all this stuff. And then somebody else can look at it and say, yeah, but did you see there's a bookend ending here suggesting the, the metaphor over here, you got to hit that. Oh yeah, right. And your whole thing changes. So it's important to get other, other eyes on your stuff. We have Clarissa and then Michael. Well, hi, Tommy. Um... Hi. So I did want to ask, since, you know, I am more in the beginning stages of everything and I just moved to a new city, uh, what is uh, the best way for me to meet, you know, more people in the industry, like directors, casting directors, and how can I grow those relationships without being like too much? Great. I'm so glad you mentioned too much because actors are too much yeah. all the time. And when you walk onto set or in the room or whatever, just remember that the air of the actor before you was probably something unfavorable. You know, like <laughs> they were desperate and we want it so bad. And chances are the person that left, you should be a breath of fresh air in terms of just how you're acting, your demeanor, your demeanor. Um, and, and all of it suggesting that this isn't the end all be all this moment here. Because the thing is, casting directors and agents want what they can't have, and they want what is a little different. And what is different is the abandonment of, of desperation, the abandonment of control. Um, you're focused more on the connection rather than the impression. Yeah. You know? um, but I would say what I did in New York, I called up, uh, I didn't call up, Lord. I, I emailed uh, Marcy Phillips because I took a workshop and she said, if you guys need, some idiot said, if we can contact you, what's your email? But she said <laughs> it and I wrote it down in my notebook. So do that guys. And while we're on the subject, grab one notebook so you can keep tabs on who likes what. Every casting director is different. Some have small rooms and don't want you coming in more than 10 minutes early. Some don't like sides in your hands. Trust me, it's important to note this stuff and it will come in handy. But when you do, 
give it a couple of weeks, but reach out and say, um, hey, I would love to swing by uh, any day that you need it and be a reader. If you need me, let me know. Happy to help. And oh, that is okay. huge in so many reasons. You walk, I went, I went into CBS and I sat next to Marcy Phillips the, the entire day, shared a turkey cranberry sandwich with her. And the whole day I saw all these big actors coming in. You know what? I mean, aside from connecting with Marcy and having her see that I'm not crazy and weird and I'm a hard worker and I, I can read and I'm, you know, I'm a little bit connected to her. I also found, and this is the, one of the main reasons you should do it, is I saw acting from the other side. I saw the casting room from the other side and everything was different ever since. Um, I saw actors come in who were so nervous. And what really changed was I wasn't nervous in the room and no one was, why are they? They should come in to the space with the same expectation and fun and levity as anybody in the room currently. And what mostly happens 90% of the time is the person is too nervous to perform. And that's why only 10 people out of 100 get pushed to the director. Actually, it's more like uh, maybe 20 out of 500 get pushed to the director because they're doing it wrong. And so what we really focus on in, in our sessions and in kind of a, whatever correspondence we're, we're dealing with at Working Actor Pro, we talk about um, uh, the fact that when you walk into a room and you see 25 people or you see 100 people sign in and you think that you're competing with the 100, it's not at all. You're competing with 10 because chances are 90% of those people don't know what they're doing. What we try to focus on is, is, is hitting the beats of what you need to hit in that room. And it comes from the elevator all the way through leaving the building. Um, it's what you say, it's what you do, it's how you attack the material. And in the scene, uh, when you are, when you know that you're kind of, you kind of are applying the formula, you're, and this may answer some questions here about like scene work and self tapes, you know, you're doing all the things that they want, which none, no other people are doing. You're splitting the world. If I have a character here and we're talking about a Ferris wheel, it's over there or the horse or whatever it is. And, and you acknowledge it, you take in the room. And I mentioned this a couple of times. The reason I booked Chicago PD was because I didn't deliver my line about cool precinct. It'd be cool to come here after training. I'd said, cool precinct. Wow. Be cool to come here after training. Boom. I booked it. Why? Because everyone else delivered it to their reader. Hey, so how is it here, man? We're hoping after graduation, this is our spot. There are all these little things that you can do and, and we can hash this out in sessions, but you apply the same formula and you get to a point like me where I can send in a tape, forget it, and then get a call a week later consistently saying, hey, they want to see another uh, role or they want to see another scene or you have a call back or you booked it. And it's because I applied the same formula and it's only in seeing the wrong thing that I know the right thing. So get in the casting uh -huh. group and, and get, that's why I say get on a film set because you're going to see the whole world from the inside out because actors only see it from their eyes. They're selfish. They're, they want to be the show. It's only them. But when you see everything for what it is, you start to look at it in a kind of an aerial view. And in that way, you're removing yourself from it. And by abandoning control and abandoning ego, um, you have an easier time with everything. You're more receptive. You're more open. People tend to like you a little more when you're not really focused on yourself and you're focused on the whole machine um, in general. I know this is a broad question. I know you kind of just touched on this, but what do you think like makes you stand out from the rest in the audition? Like I know you said you're basically competing against 10 but are there any like keys or tips that really like sets you apart from the rest? Yeah, I walk into the room um, without really thinking about the audition. I'm just, I just walk into the room and say, hey, thanks for having me. Um, and I just get right to my place, you know? Hey, thanks for having me. And I walk right to my place. A lot of actors will come in and they'll, they'll do this. It's really about the presentation. They're, hi. Yeah. Hi, where do you, <laughs> am I? Okay. Are you going to do that on set? No. You know what you're doing. You come right here. Cool. Ready? You need a slate? No? Great. Let's go. And that's what you do. And most actors come in and they're just like, can I put my bag here? Or like, I'm so scared. It's like, come on. You know, so I do that. I also yeah. apply the same formula and scene work that I always do. And when you do that enough and you, it's almost like you're walking into the same room every time because it's always a camera, a person and four walls. And that's all I need. Because what used to happen is I'd walk into an unfamiliar room and I'd be like, I don't know where anything is. It's like, throw away everything. And all you have to do is look at this. You, you acknowledge the camera. You're acknowledging whoever's reading with you. 
and you're painting the world. And what I'll do is I'll split, I'll split the lens. I'll create depth with the back of my shoulder to, uh, well, you know, add a little bit of dimension here. If it's, if it's like this, and then you kind of do a little, a little movement here and situate, situate yourself with a little bit of depth, it adds a lot, which is why they say, wear layers and headshots. It's the depth. It just adds something. It's a very visual medium. So it's all about how you look. Um, if I'm self-taping, I do all the right things. Headroom, two inches, not four. You know, um, I'm, I'm in the middle. Uh, if I am on the side, my nose is open rather than shut off with all this craziness here. You think a director yeah. who specializes in visual storytelling is going to be cool with that? No. And, and it happens a lot. It happens more than you think. Um, being prepared, and, and I know it's like the memorizing is a lot, but if you do this enough, and we can handle this in your sessions, uh, you, you, your understanding of the side is so much more than just the, the lines. It's actually not about the lines at all. And in the counterintuitive nature, which is what this business is, once you get to that point where it's not about the lines, it's about the story where there are no lines. It's just the feeling of the story. It's the betrayal or it's the love. It's the turning of a character. It's the beats. It's the, it's the Easter eggs in that scene. It's all this stuff that you can pick up that's going to tell the casting director, we didn't have to tell him that. He found it, right? He found it on his own. Yep. Um, and that is really, really good. And it tells them that you're not just an actor, you're a writer too. So I, I walk in and I think like the casting director. First thing is they've been doing this all day. You're the 300th person they've seen. They don't want small talk and they don't want excuses because everybody got the sides yesterday. You know, we need to hurry up. We're hungry and tired. Let's do this, right? I'm in and I'm out respectfully, right? Um, I think like the director, what do they want from this story? What's really happening here? It's not just me having a conversation. There's something in the reacting. And we've talked about that before. It's not about the acting. It's about the reacting. Nobody reacts. Yeah. You think that, that you can look down at their lines when they're saying it and then say yours. No, no, no. What they want is when they're saying your lines, take it in just as much as you're delivering your line because it's the reaction. And what I do is I think about the editor. I have the editor in mind. So I know that as an editor, they're going to have to... Um, obviously hit the actor who's speaking, but they're going to hit me too. They're going to kiss my shot too. And I have to react. So, you know, we say that um, communication is what 75% nonverbal. It's all about your face. It's all about the stillness or the, the um, reaction of, of your body language that tells the story. That's why the villain has pointed features because we were taught that villains have pointed features and that's why they get the bad guy because they look like the bad guy. And if they look like the bad guy, then Donna from Littleton, Montana will believe this story that she's watching on AMC or whatever. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, there are so many things and, and you're going to uncover them. There's a lot of stuff that, that we kind of throw out, but um, if you apply the same formula, it's going to be intuitive where you don't even think about it. And now I'll read my sides and I know exactly what I'm going to do because I'm just inspired by the muse that's quite literally there for you. And it's going to be there when you tap it. And, and it's pretty amazing. It's, and it's, it takes a little while to get, but you will get there. And this is from a guy who struggled for years in the audition room, nerves and memorizing and oh my God. But now, like I said, it's not the end all be all anymore. My wife is my life. My dogs are my life. The mountain outside is my life. You know, acting is there, sure, but it's way easier now because other things are important. And think about this. When all of our friends are booking and I ask, I love asking this question, what were you doing before? What were you doing before that huge booking? Well, my buddy Nick got drunk last night and was making out with a girl. And then like he woke up and he went to this audition. He's like, oh my God, and he did it, right? For me, I booked the NBC Playboy Club because I was not even thinking about the audition. I was doing something else on the other side of the casting room. And they said, oh, why don't you come in and read this? Totally unprepared. It's when our minds are elsewhere that we actually do well. It's think about like when that girl came up and talked to you or whatever, you were in your other element. You were shooting whatever. You're doing something else. And because you were not in yourself, you know, people like, people are attracted to that. People are attracted to the idea that wherever you are is not the end all be all. There's also something sizzling over there that you're actually more interested in and casting directors are girlfriends. And I'm sorry, I'm talking like a man here, but, but that's, that's what it is. You know, it's, it's, you're, you're playing the, the game. 
you're playing the game and to, to play the game, you got to understand who's the casting director, what does an editor do, the, what is the director looking for? Um, and, and also just being very, very kind and warm and happy and not desperate. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Thank you're you. welcome, you're welcome. Um, Aria? Do you have any tips and tricks for successful agent meetings? I do. Yeah. You know what? Actually, we have a wonderful e-guide that is on our website. I'm just going to open it up here. This is the Pitch Perfect e-guide from Agent Genie. As you can see, we're in uh, New York City, London, LA, Toronto, Chicago, Atlanta, and soon Vancouver. So keep a lookout for that. The Pitch Perfect e-guide, how to find an agent, pitch yourself and win the room. Um, there's a bunch of info here. I tell you how to find the agent, how to get your pitch email exactly what they're looking for um, and a bunch of other suggestions that's going to help you get repped. Uh, so this whole process takes 15 minutes um, and it also gives you the, the access uh, button and everything to get your own. At the very, very end of it, when people start, when agents start to, to reach out to you, you are going to be taking meetings and it's really important that you know what you're doing in that meeting. So aside from some introductory comments about what to expect and what you should do and what you should wear and when you should get there and all that stuff, there's um, some other things that I do to stand out from the crowd. You know, what, what I always say is, you know, you're interviewing them just as much as they're interviewing you and they're taking a, a, a chance just as you are. So I walk into a meeting knowing that this is kind of a business meeting. What are you going to bring to the table and what am I going to bring to the table? What I'll do is I'll, um, I will, first of all, ask them questions that suggest that I did my research. Uh, what's your book out policy? That is the greatest thing for, my God, agents, they cannot stand uh, actors and and in this in this reason and it is actors just don't book out and it is a really really uh inconvenient thing um unfortunately but it's really really easy all you have to do is is be on top of it and when you're out of um when you're out of town you make sure that you tell them you know so you saying hey what's what's your booking po your book out policy they're gonna know oh good he, he cares about that who's my point and that's Who's, you know, if you have five agents in a company, well, who's, who, who, my point is the one that deals with me the most or the primary person. Who's my point? My point is a, is a term that you can use. And when you do, they're going to say, oh yeah, good. He knows what he's talking about. These two words, these phrases are, it's terminology in our, in our industry. And when you use them, um, generally, whoever is across the table considers you to be a pro because you're using these, this terminology. Whether you're on set or stage, you're going to hear a totally different language, so it's important to speak it. There's a full breakdown of it on our downloadable docs in the course, along with your actor checklist, books that every actor should read that we stand behind. So check that out in the course. Tell me about your roster. Given me and my type, where do I fall in? Do you have a lot of me or what, right? Because they only, have, they only need to have one, two, three, maybe, of you. And for me, if they have three Tommies, it's Tommy that's six, two. It's Tommy me, and then maybe it's Tommy that is a little younger than me. And then, of course, I always mention certain things that I think are really important. I'll never be late or unprepared. Always submitting a quality tape. Always, always. You'll never get a bad tape from me. And it's in terms of the audio and the visual and the being ready and, and prepared and all that. Um, the booking out, like we, we talked. And then, of course, I mentioned that I'm active out there and I want them to know that, right? When I walk into a room, I'm big about, about uh, professionalism. So you won't be hearing any diva stories from me at all. Uh, you know, um, I will say I'm also in, I'm pretty active on my end. So you're going to see people reach out who want to cast me and things, but that's because I was throwing my hat into the ring. So just so you know, I'm kind of active out there. So they get an idea. Oh, okay. He's, he's out there and he's not just waiting by the phone, you know, skills wise. Uh, I, I'm a drummer. I play golf. Um, and there's a few other things that I do that are directly related to commercials that I've gone in for. There looks T-Mobile needs, needs a drummer who's in a subway and he's with a bunch of people or Titleist is doing a commercial or this film role needs somebody who can ride Western style on a horse. Mention anything like improv, Shakespeare. Uh, you know, if you focus on film and TV, say it, you know, because a lot of actors go into theater. And they're just doing theater. And you know what? Agents love film and TV actors because they make a lot more money and they work a lot more. So these are things that you need to tell them so that they know he's not just an actor. He, you know, he, he has other things in his uh, Swiss army knife tools, right? 
So um, if you want a full version of this, and I we have it in our Pitch Perfect e-guide, you can get it online or through the seven-day epiphany if you're in it. There's this kind of a psychological game and questions you should ask and talking points. So um, definitely, I recommend checking that out, okay? Lovely. Okay, thanks. You're welcome. Um, okay, you guys, thank you so much for hanging out. Um, I know we went over considerably, but I appreciate everybody just sticking around, asking some great questions. Robin had a ball. He already texted me. So thank you. And Kazim, I didn't say hi to you. Hello, sir. All right, everybody. Thank you thank much. You. Hang out at the thank next you. one and enjoy yeah, the epiphany. You. If you have any thank questions, you. let me know. All right. Good day, everyone. Thank all you. Right. Bye. Bye, guys. Have a great night, everybody. It's awesome hey, meeting hi, you all. Same here. Good night.